Hi, Student Success. My name is Dr. Linda Remark, and I am your instructor for this 16-week Totally Web course. The beginning of each semester, I always like to hop on and create an intro video just to let you hear my voice because over the next 16 weeks, I will be uploading various videos that go over lecture material as well as assignment expectations so that you can start getting used to it now, as well as just kind of letting you see how the course is set up and some navigation so that before you actually jump into week one, you know how uh, to click around and where everything is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and jump in by saying the first thing is if you have never taken an online class before, even a Web 2 course, you are probably not going to even be able to get to this screen right here. You're going to have to take what's called the Succeeding Online Orientation. And that is a six module, uh, little mini course, if you will. Um, sometimes it takes students anywhere from a half an hour to maybe two hours. It just really depends how much time that you need to like really go over everything. But it's just to make sure that you're familiar with Blackboard in general. If you have not yet taken that, when you go to click into our course, it'll come up with a little screen that says you first need to take orientation. So if you're watching this video from the link I sent in your email, then that's fine. But if you go to try to log into Blackboard to try to access our course, you may or may not be able to do so depending on if you have taken that orientation or not. So I wanted to make sure that you were aware of that first. All right, so once you've taken your orientation, the class is opened, um, you'll go ahead and click on the start here section. It's always gonna bring you to this page right here. This is just gonna be an overview of what the course, you know, the expectations and the, the outline of the purpose of the course. Here is our master syllabus. So when I say master syllabus, this is just a very general syllabus. It does not have any specifics. You can see it says, you know, we're student success, we're a run credit hour course, there's the course description, it meets all the college general learning outcomes. There's a bunch of course objectives right there as well, outlining of college policies, if you have any uh, academic needs, the disability support service information is there, computer use policy, and student success resources, many of which we will talk about throughout this course of this 16-week session together. I say that this not give a lot of specifics to our class because any class you take is going to have very similar information in their master syllabus. The only thing that's gonna be different is the name, the course description, and then the outcomes there. But all of this stuff underneath here is very general, but important uh, as it relates to a lot of information here at the college. So that's the master syllabus, and I encourage you to take a look, you know, click around, make sure that you're familiar with the information that's presented on that master syllabus. Now, beyond that, after you've taken a look at the master syllabus, you'll see right underneath that is the class syllabus. And this is going to open up into a PDF. You can see it's going to open up right there. If you don't want it right there, you can click and it'll open up in a separate window. This is our class syllabus. This is very specific to just us. So as you can see, um, this is student success. My name is Dr. Linda Remark. Here are the hours that I am in my office. I'm on campus more than that, but those are my office hours where I am dedicated solely to you know, either planning or grading or student appointments or whatever that might look like. Um, my office is in E244. Now, if you're totally online, which a lot of students who take this class happen to be, and you're not on campus, you can always call me, my extension's 5249, and we can talk over the phone. I can set up a Zoom during these office hours here. Um, I can try to set up Zooms in the evening. I do have three young children and all three of them are in 1500 different activities. So we're frequently on the go in the evening, but I can do my best to you know, accommodate like evening appointments if necessary. And there is my email address. Um, other than when I am teaching during the day, because I do teach face-to-face -face classes, I usually try to respond to students as quickly as I can for um, email purposes, especially the first couple weeks of the semester, because I know students are a little, you know, worried about what's going on. You do have a textbook, but it is an electronic textbook, and I'm actually going to walk you through that here shortly. So you don't have to worry about going and purchasing your textbook or anything like that, but I will talk to you about your text. We have different methods of evaluation. So we have different um, discussion posts. We have some assignments weekly and so that's kind of you're going to see the breakdown in the actual syllabus 
calendar part here in a little bit. Attendance is required. So for an online class, attendance means meeting your weekly discussion post. So in my class, you have to post by Wednesdays every week if there's a discussion form. So it is due by Wednesday, end of the day, like 11.55 p.m. or so. If you meet your post deadline, you get your week attendance 100%. Now let's say it's early in the semester, you forget to post, but then you post on Thursday or Friday. You're still going to get credit for posting, but you're just going to get late credit for attendance. So every discussion post, you're almost getting graded twice in a way. You're getting graded for actually posting and then responding to classmates, and then you're getting the attendance grade. So if you post, it doesn't matter when, even if it's Sunday night, last minute, you forgot, you're still going to get some of those points for posting, but it's just whether or not did you get full attendance or were you late on your attendance. On a week where there is no discussion forum, so there's no discussion forum, how I take attendance is did you submit your assignments by Sunday? So if there's one assignment, completing that one assignment by Sunday gets you 100% attendance for that week. If there's more than one assignment, every once in a while you'll have like two or three, you have to complete all of the assignments. If you miss one, let's say there's two assignments in a certain week and you only complete one and that's part of your attendance grade, you're gonna get 50% attendance. You need a 70% or higher attendance grade to pass the class. So it's really important to make sure that you are paying attention, you're logging in frequently, so you're not missing those attendance points. All right, so here's information on withdrawal dates. This is a 16 week course, so you have until November 21st to withdraw. Let's say just things happen, life is busy, you have a work schedule change and it's just not allowing you the flexibility you thought. Whatever the case is, I know things happen and that's for any 16 week course. You have until November 21st to get that off your schedule. After that, it stays on whether you complete the course or not in terms of your grades. All right, so down here at the bottom, this is the calendar of all your assignments that we're doing every week. So you can see I've tried to make it stand out whenever you're Discussion posts are due, like right here, chapter one discussion, week one, right away when you log in, you'll have a discussion post due by Wednesday. So you're gonna wanna post your original response for your attendance and then respond to two classmates by Sunday. And I'll go into more detail about all of this as well. And then anything else except for your attendance post is due by Sunday. So you can see I tried to do that for every single week just as a stand out like, hey, don't forget you need to post this by Wednesday. You can see here like in week four, for instance, there is no discussion post. So you have to just complete this assignment by Sunday and that's how I will take attendance that week. So that is run through the entire 16 weeks so you know exactly what is expected each week. So that's your syllabus. Some students like to just, you know, save it to their desktop or print it out and have it on hand, whatever works for you. All right, so underneath where we got our syllabus, this is a course tour. This is by eStark State. So this is our uh, department on campus that deals with basically like online learning. They did put together a course tour. You are more than welcome to take a look at that to help you kind of again get more familiarized with the course. I just like to make sure that you're also hearing my voice and seeing things from my perspective. Here is the instructor welcome. This just gives you a little bit of info on myself. So I have been teaching here at the college for 14 years. Um, I teach this class, I teach reading classes, I teach college success, and I do a mixture of completely face-to-face, -face, web two, which means we meet one day a week and the rest is online, and then web three, which is what you all are. Web three meaning there are no live sessions, there are no Zoom sessions. All of you are working at your own pace within the week. So you can't just say, oh, it's week five, I'm gonna work on week one right now. That, not quite like that. So you have to work within each week, but it's still at your own pace. So that's a little bit more about myself, where I got my, my degrees, my, my children, and things of that nature. Underneath the course introduction, with the syllabi and my welcome, here's more information. There's an alignment map, there's different expectations, software, there's a bunch of just information, resources, things that you might find helpful. I encourage you to take a look, click around, get to know those a little bit more. Right here is your textbook. So right here is the book we're going to use. It is going to be embedded inside every week. So it's not like you always have to come right here to find the textbook, but when you click on it, let's see, I already have it open up here. I'll just kind of close. It'll take you right to chapter one on that link. I, what I like about this book is I think it's really easy to navigate. So it opens you up right to chapter one. 
and to read through, I mean, just scroll down, or you don't even have to get to the bottom. Here is the next section. And say you wanted to read it all, you just keep going all the way, you get to the end, click next section. So it's really easy to navigate down at the bottom, back and forth. You can also search up in the book if you have a particular keyword you're looking for, or you can go to the table of contents, and let's say you wanted to look at something in chapter four, you can you know, go directly to that section. So for that purpose, I really like this. And it's free. It's open education resource, which means you are not being charged any additional information or excuse me, fees or anything like that associated with this book. I know some students really like the physical textbooks. I am one of those people. So you're always welcome to try to print a page here and there, uh, but we do not have the actual hard copies of those. But I encourage you if you want to to print anything, you are more than welcome to. All right, so again, the rest of this page is really just your information, resources that you can have access to as needed. All right, from there, let's go ahead and click on the Lessons tab. So in the Lessons area, this is where your weekly work will be. Now, I will get more in detail with this in your week one video, but you'll see eventually how all of the weeks are set up very similarly, and you can see how they're scheduled to open up every Monday. So every new week is going to open up on a Monday and close on a Sunday night. So here's just a quick sneak peek of week one. It's always going to tell you kind of what the week is about, the items you're going to be looking at, and the assignments. And here again, I have when all the assignments are due. You're also going to have a materials folder, which is just what it sounds like. It's going to have materials for the week in it. So you can see again, you can click directly on, oh, here's our textbook link. That's going to take you right into chapter one. Here are slides. I will often kind of quote unquote lecture from the slideshows. So whenever you have your weekly videos, I might have the slideshow pulled up and just kind of walking through. Just a real quick heads up, I won't use this one word for word. It's really long, but oftentimes I will kind of pull that PowerPoint up and walk through it. And I'll also maybe reference the textbook as well. But because this is all web, it really is self-driven. I do encourage you to go through the PowerPoints or the text or whatever you need more in detail, especially let's say in chapter one, you know, based on where you are in your education, in your academic, your career path, you might need to focus on certain sections more than others. So I encourage you to kind of really spend the time where it's helpful to you. Because let's face it, some of you are still in high school. You're taking this as a college credit plus student. Some of you have graduated within the last couple of years. Some of you have already been in the workforce. Some of you have kids who are in college. We're all at different places. And so you're all gonna need something a little different from the textbook. And that's why, again, I'm always going to encourage you to say, hey, really focus in on what is going to be the most beneficial for you in every chapter. So that's how the materials folder is set up. And then every week we'll also have an assignment folder, which is going to be, again, just what it sounds like. It's where your assignments are going to be for the week. So I will really lay out um, week one in the week one video, but I wanted to give you that, that preview. So a couple things. I also wanted to note on this page, we do have something called a muddy point and a student lounge. These are discussion boards and I'm gonna show you how they work because you do have discussion posts due in almost every week of the course. So let's go into muddy point. Muddy point means, hey, I have a question I don't quite understand. It's almost like raising your hand in class. The, the catch is I encourage you to not put anything personal in here. Please don't ask me a question about your grade or a question about an assignment direct message me that and I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. But post a question that either I or any classmate can answer. You know, hey, can anyone find this page where it talks about, you know, whatever it might be that anyone would be okay to answer. And I still monitor and respond and check this forum. But if you have anything that is really personal to you, please make sure you message me directly. But here's how this works. So you get into your discussion board. To create a new post, you just click on create thread. In the subject area, you put whatever you would like, you know, I have a question, and then type it here. And then hit submit, okay? And you're going to see, like I've already done here, you're going to see the post right there. Now let's say you need to reply to someone, you need to answer their question, you're in the weekly discussion boards, and you need to respond to a, a classmate. All you do is click in and hit reply. You'll respond right here under here and hit submit. So that is how the discussion boards work. And that's the same for the student lounge. So all the discussion boards have that similar icon right here. The student lounge is where you can kind of just introduce yourself. It's really informal. 
I do not grade the student lounge. It does not count as attendance. It's just some place where you can go in and say, hey, this is my name, or um, here's my suggestion on a movie I've seen that's really great, or anything like that. Almost like you're kind of chatting before class if you were face-to-face, -face, or if you were chatting after class. This is what this kind of student lounge area is for. So feel free to use that throughout the semester as well. So those are the two discussion boards. Here's another link to the textbook. As I mentioned, every chapter has a direct link inside whatever week it's in. So chapter four is in week three. There will be a link directly taking you to chapter four of the textbook. But here's just a real general access again. The required syllabus quiz. Now this you have to take before week one will even open. So this is going to ask you questions about the syllabus is going to ask you specific questions about our course and you can go back and reference our syllabus or reference this video, whatever you need to do, but you cannot access week one until you get 100% on this syllabus quiz. So let's say you take it and you get an 80. Week one's not going to open. You're going to have to go back and retake and get 100%. So I often have students ask me why they can't access week one. Well, it's because you probably didn't get 100% on that syllabus quiz. So you need to make sure you take this syllabus quiz first and then the week one folder Will look like this folder right here it'll fill in the color and then you can get into week one so keep that in mind whenever you are ready to start the course you have to take that syllabus quiz the next thing i want to point out on this page is your student services assignment every student in student success and college success has to attend a workshop it is not due until week 16 so when you click in here this kind of walks you through how to register for a workshop and then this is a Dropbox, which means eventually you will Dropbox your certificate of completion. Now, when I say workshop, usually it just be online, although we are bringing back face-to-face -face events. So if you are going to attend a face-to-face -face event, even like something fun like the back to, to you know, fall semester or welcome bash that's coming up on the 30th, you can attend that and you can get credit for your workshop. Or you can do something a little bit more traditional, which I will show you where it's located. They have not uploaded fall quite yet, but under my Stark State, under academic support, you're going to see right here, student success workshops. And then eventually they will have everything here for September, October, November, December. These are all online. You can see they're all through Zoom. The same will be the case for fall. They may throw in some face-to-face -face offerings here and there now that a lot of that is coming back. But you'll just click here, you'll register, make sure you mark it on your calendar, and it's all done through the computer. When you are done attending a student success workshop or a live event, you will get either a email receipt or a PDF, something that verifies your attendance. I'm not talking about registration confirmation. I do not need and I will not accept an email saying, hey, you're registered. That's great. You can register for 15 workshops and not attend any of them. So you need to make sure that you upload the certificate of completion or the certificate of attendance after you've already attended the event or the workshop. And I will walk you through uploading documents in the weekly assignments as well. So you don't have to worry about that. But I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. You have until week 16, but I have had cases where students wait and wait and wait, and then they never get their workshop credit in. So just keep in mind that that's a requirement that you'll have. And that's the rest of on the information on the lessons page. You can see all 16 weeks are loaded in there and they'll open up every Monday morning and the previous week will close. Some other features I just want to make sure you're aware of under course messages. Here is where you can send me specific messages. Go to create message. You can see that anyone who is taking this course and there is a whole list of people in here because we have a couple different sections combined. You can message individual students because it doesn't give any personal information away, just their name, not their individual email address or anything like that. But let's say you want to email me within Blackboard. You click on my name, you move it over, you put your subject, and then you type your message and hit submit. Whenever I am grading in Blackboard every week for the first several weeks, I will send you an individual message and say, hey, you're all done with week one, just so you know you're on track. I will do that through Blackboard because it's easier for me to just kind of message you while I'm in the learning management system versus going out into the email and looking up your email and, and messaging you that way. Another thing that is helpful is the announcements. You can already see I have week one uploaded in here, ready to go. Week one will, or excuse me, announcements will contain everything you're doing for the week. They will also eventually include links to the weekly videos. You can click on them right on the announcement if you would like to. 
anything I upload as an announcement, I will also put as a course message. So you'll see it in a couple different places. Course calendar is just what it sounds like. You can go through and you can see, this has a couple of classes in here. You can see what is due when, and that way you can always make sure that you're getting everything done. In addition to my announcements, the syllabus, the um, weekly videos, the course messages. So lots of different ways to be reminded of what is coming up. Finally, the my grades is another one you might frequent. It's literally just listing your grades. So you can always be aware of how you're doing in class. The rest of these are references to different resources here on campus. If you wanted a quick link to the digital library, if you needed help from the help desk, anything like that. So I hope this overview was helpful. Please reach out if you need anything. My information is on the syllabus here again, if you have any questions and I look forward to a great semester. Bye.